What's up, YouTube? This is Wendell, aka Bit Native. This is one of the first in a series of work from home tech that involves the metal as a service setup, configuration, liggity split. And we're going to do it very quickly, very efficiently, and autonomously. It's going to build upon one of the previous videos, which was essentially setting up basic Ubuntu, the desktop variant 20.04 LTS. Uh, one of the things we do on the channel is try to keep things simple so that you can focus on running your business from your home enterprise. Whether you're using something like these actual thin clients to create your own cluster and run Kubernetes on top of it to orchestrate your high availability, high availability services, or if you're actually going to something like ServerMonkey and configuring a refurbished server, uh, saving money by using some of the refurbished stuff from eBay or server monkey in the case of a server is something that makes sense as a home-based business. Uh, the reliability of a lot of this good consumer grade or actually in the case of server monkey, you're getting enterprise grade equipment when you buy Dell or HP rack servers that have redundant power supplies, redundant processors, and error checking memory. <laughs> we'll start off with this simple installation of Metal as a Service, so let's get it. All right, let's, so let's go ahead and get started with our installation of Metal as a Service. Uh, once again, this is Metal as a Service, whether you're installing from something like these thin clients we have here, or if you're looking to fire up nodes in Proxmox or vCenter or something like that. If you haven't had an opportunity to install Ubuntu and get that up and running with OpenSSH remote access, go ahead and take a look at the video that goes to the uh, lightning fast installation to get that all set up, updated, and open SSH installed and ready to go. And it will pick up right here. We'll continue to create the videos here on work from home tech in a modular format so that one video will lead into the next video and you can pick and choose a la carte on how you want to chain them together to accomplish the work and get that work done. So let's go ahead and dig in. I have the install ready to go. All right, let's go ahead and we can secure shell. I think I lost one of my thin clients. Nope. <laughs> All right. Do you remember that IP address? 192.168.1.34. Do the secure shell, say yes, I want to add it. And This should allow me to get in. So now we're inside of our machine that is going to be our Metal as a Service server. So I have the Metal as a Service quick install. Uh, if you take a look at the description, it'll provide the link there for you. So now we have Metal as a Service right here. We're gonna go ahead and go to that folder. And here you see the script. Uh, my setup that YAML file. So what we'll do is we'll do an Ansible playbook and we'll do metal as a service. I forgot to do the sudo here. A few moments later. Everything went through. So let's go ahead and take a look. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and close that out and we're going to do Login again, secure shell in. I don't, if I don't typo the password, I keep typing over and reaching over these machines which are getting in my way. So let me go ahead and get them out of the way and I don't knock them over again uh, because typically PCs don't like to be tossed on the ground. Nope. All right, so you can see I've got a couple of uh, nice, message of the day screens going on here and that's essentially uh what occurred when i installed the figlet and also the the toilet uh anzi art per se 
All right, so now we are in our machine. This is Moss. So we can go in here and we can do a Moss create admin. Now, one thing it'll do is it's gonna tell me um, you can only do it as root. So just to make sure that I demonstrated that I typed it in without the sudo. So now we're going to do the sudo and we'll go in here and bruh do this with a username of Wendell again and I will put in password and All these passwords are kind of the thing that's been killing me here. So I'll put in a window here at uh, work from home tech. And it gives you an opportunity to install SSH keys here. Um, I don't, I do this from the actual web interface. So if you wanna to totally just skip this section, you can hit enter and you can skip this section and you'll be fine. So now we actually have an administrator installed on this machine and we can actually go to the machine and let's take a look and see if we can access it via the web. Now, one thing to note, it doesn't have any self-signed certificates right out of the gate. So it's just gonna be a HTTP 192.168 1.34 and then there was a port of 5240 and then metal as a service and now you can see that we've got metal as a service turn off my translator here we'll go ahead and type in username here and put in that password and i always say never so now we are here you can see it tells you the first thing the dhcp server is not enabled and you don't have a vlan there's some pretty rudimentary steps you can do that will actually auto populate that information for you so what i'll do here is i'll put in a dns forwarder What I like to do is I like to actually take advantage of a Pi-hole DNS server I have. So I'm gonna point that at my Pi-hole DNS. Um, then we can keep the Ubuntu archive. We could also keep the extra archives all the same. And that'll be it for that step. We hit next. Now we start off with some I say some, but initially just one image that'll install. Right now it's 20.04 LTS Ubuntu. But one of the things that I will go ahead and do right now is I will go ahead and I will install the 2204 version. We'll go ahead and kick that off. Uh, now we are synced. We have 2204 as well as 2004. Uh, that is good to go. And we'll say continue with that. All right, now we can go ahead and hit finish setup. Now, we're almost there, a couple of more steps. Uh, first of which is to go ahead and we're gonna do SSH, SSH keygen. All right, we're gonna say the type is RSA. We're gonna say bytes is Bruh. 4096. And we're gonna run that, let that generate a RSA certificate. And what we'll do is Type that out. So we basically did a concatenate to pipe out this key. 
We're going to copy that, go back over to our mass web interface. So we're going to say upload. We're going to paste that public key in here, import that key. Now you can see there's my key from the mass server. Good to go. We have it installed on there. So just in case something goes wrong here, once I fire up this version of Ubuntu 2204, I can still get in there from this console on the mass server I have set up. Uh, you can add in different machines here, um, as many as you need. So what I'll do now is I will go ahead and finish setup. I'll go to settings. And what I wanna do is I want to click on deploy under settings. And I want to change this. Actually, it's saying my DHCP isn't up and running. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to subnets and let's go ahead and here's those two interfaces. I've got a network of 192.168.0.0, um, no DHCP. So we're going to set up fabric zero. We're going to click on edit. Uh, we're going to click on untagged and what we're going to do is we're just going to click on enable DNS and it's just going to give us an initial range of 190 to 253 and we'll say configure DHCP and this looks like it's good so it's got DNS DHCP it's also got a proxy server so it can it can uh, deploy those images so with that being done we're good to go there let's go back to the settings i want to see if i can change that deployment doesn't look like i can change the deployment yet commissioning ah there we go default release there it is jellyfish 22 um we're gonna go ahead and save that So now that I've saved the initial operating system for commissioning, now I should be able to go and change the version of deployment. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at machines. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and fire one of these guys up. So we'll take a look at that. All right, there's my screen. And I'll go over here and got a machine set up. I'll fire that up. And you should see that the machine will actually fire up. Uh, there's the Lenovo. I have the keyboard disconnected and the beep still turned on because I want to hear when it fires up and I want you to hear when it fires up. Um, but you can see DHCP to one of these guys. It has been found. A few moments later. Forms it. If you take a look now. You can see now that it's actually populated and it's given it kind of a generic name. Quick Pug uh, Mass right now. So you can see it's commissioning. And now we have to go in here and it's in an unknown state. But what we'll do is <clears throat> we'll take a look at it. So here we have our four cores, 2.9 gigahertz. It is a series four i5, 16 gigs of RAM, 256 gigabyte hard drive. Uh, you can see all the information here. It's a think center. Uh, you can see the network, you see the storage, PCI, PCI devices, USB, and we'll go back to machines. So it's actually new, set the machine. Oh, let me check on the machine. Take an action. I'm gonna go ahead and do a commission. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna start commissioning for the machine. Uh, it's giving me an error right here because it doesn't know what kind of power source this has. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go here and we're gonna go to machines. We're gonna go to this machine and we're gonna go to configuration and we're gonna go to edit and we're gonna say the power source. Uh, like I said, here's the different power, uh, power supplies that Moss currently supports. 
Uh, here's that LXD, like I said, for virtual systems. That's one that's pretty good. There's the Proxmox. Uh, there is Microsoft. All these different ones it supports. But what I'm doing now, as you saw, I reached over and I did it manually. And I set it up manually. So we're going to go ahead and say this is all manual. And we save that. Now we can go back to machines. And we can go here to this machine. Actually, let's go back, check it, and then go take action. And take action, we'll commission it. We'll say start commissioning. And now you can see it's sitting in the commissioning category. Now, one thing that you might encounter if it does go and it fails that smart control test for the hard drive, you'll have, instead of a commissioning section, you'll have another one. That section below will be uh, failed tests. And you'll have to get it out of that failed test state in order to do anything with it. And essentially, if you can't get it to pass that test, you'll have to say override the test. So let's go ahead and power this up and observe the commissioning process. So now we have this guy booting back up. There you hear the beep. So now we can see it's running tests and it looks like the tests went good and the machine has shut down all right so now we can see it's actually in the ready column if the test would have failed it would have shown up under failed test so we can actually go here and click on this guy and we can see that tests are green uh, so they're all good to go so commissioning is complete um, there we can see logs let's go to logs so there's that smart control validate on sda or the first hard drive uh, change status from installing dependencies to running so there's that initial uh test so let's go ahead and go to machines let's go ahead and get this thing ready to go so we're going to click that machine again quick pug and we're going to take an action now to deploy so what we're going to do is we're going to go to deploy and let's see if we can flop it over here and go to that jellyfish right here. So we'll deploy uh, Jam and Jellyfish. Uh, let's see, start deployment for a machine. What I'll do is I'll go back over here. I'll hit this power button and we'll fire this guy up. This is for the beat. The website interface, you can see it's deploying. All right, so now it's doing an automatic reboot of itself. Um, because the operating system's installed now and it should reboot and come up and run. It didn't shut down like it did previously. I think we have reached where we want to. We will go ahead and let's go back to the console. And we said it was 192.168.0.254. So we're just gonna do a connectivity test. do a ping and we are good for the ping so let's go ahead and we'll do an SSH now despite the typo if you were to actually hit return on this this would fail um, that was <laughs> that was a highly asked question uh, when I initially did the first run of this to test it out and I was using it uh, You have to say Ubuntu here as The user to do the login if you're using CentOS you have to say CentOS as the user here to do the login That's just the way it deploys those images So if you don't set that username of Ubuntu on an Ubuntu machine or CentOS on a CentOS machine, it will not log in. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. Do we want to add this box? Yes. Boom, we are in. So now we are in and we can essentially do a top. And you can see that we are good to go. We've got our 16 gigs. 16 gigs of memory and we're ready to go. 
So that's a quick run through of metal as a service, getting your machines from cold metal up and running with Ubuntu or CentOS. So you can actually implement them as part of a cluster or a high availability, high availability system. Um, thanks for tuning in stay tuned for the continuation as we build upon this for additional services, uh, particularly doing metal as a service when you're working with something like Proxmox. If you haven't had an opportunity to subscribe to the channel, go ahead and hit subscribe because there's a lot more content coming. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up. If you don't like it, just let me know, leave a comment, be fair so I can have an opportunity to explain or answer or be corrected because this is technology things change and you're never always right all right stay tuned